In a recent video, we looked at why Order 66 would have failed if it was executed before the Battle of Coruscant seen in Revenge of the Sith. As that video demonstrated, the Battle of Coruscant allowed Darth Sidious to successfully pass two Security Act amendments. The first was the Supreme Command Amendment, and the second was the Judicial Command Amendment. These amendments formally named Palpatine the Supreme Commander of both the Republic's Armed Forces and the Jedi Order for the entirety of the Clone War. This was important regarding Order 66 given the wording that it contained. As seen within the Essential Guide to Warfare, Order 66 states, quote, in the event of Jedi officers acting against the interests of the Republic, and after receiving specific orders verified as coming directly from the Supreme Commander, GAR commanders will remove those officers by lethal force, and command of the GAR will revert to the Supreme Commander until a new command structure is established. Again, I'll note that the GAR within Order 66 stands for Grand Army of the Republic. Therefore, the Supreme Command Amendment and the Judicial Command Amendment that were put in place following the Battle of Coruscant were crucial to the success of Order 66, as it created an explicit chain of command that recognized that Palpatine was at the top, with there being no doubt that the Supreme Commander within the wording of Order 66 was Palpatine. As I mentioned at the end of that video, establishing this explicit chain of command through the Security Act amendments ensured that the goals Darth Sidious had for Order 66 regarding the Sith Grand Plan were met, these being that the vast majority of Jedi were eliminated in an instantaneous attack, with the Jedi Order being annihilated in a single, decisive action. By establishing such an explicit chain of command, the Sith attack against the Jedi removed any threats of failure connected to potential confusion surrounding the command structure that was in place, whereby any such confusion might result in the clone troopers hesitating to carry out Order 66 or even directly refusing such an order that came from Palpatine, instead declining to attack the Jedi who they fought beside during the Clone War. Since we are looking at this topic as it was seen within Legends, where there weren't any biochips in place that Sidious could utilize for ensuring Order 66 was successfully carried out, this potential hesitation or rejection to carry out Order 66 by the clone troopers would have been disastrous for Sidious and the Sith Grand Plan to destroy the Republic and Jedi Order. I want to look at this aspect specifically in today's video. Namely, just how real was the possibility that Order 66 could have been a complete failure had Sidious not established the explicit chain of command through the Security Act amendments, which formally named Palpatine the Supreme Commander of the Republic's Armed Forces and the Jedi Order following the Battle of Coruscant. In other words, was there a real threat to the success of Order 66 in regards to the clone troopers hesitating or rejecting Palpatine's order to execute Order 66 on the basis that there was confusion surrounding the chain of command that existed? Even more, how important was the chain of command to the clone troopers? In today's video, we'll look at these questions from the perspective of the clone troopers themselves, and in the end, we'll demonstrate that in combination with the Legends lore revealed in the previous video, Order 66 would have failed if it was executed before the Battle of Coruscant. The Legends lore provides a number of examples demonstrating why it would be important for Sidious to establish an explicit chain of command as was accomplished through the Security Act amendments. The importance of the command code in regards to the clone troopers is established within issue number 81 of the Star Wars Republic comic series. Here we see an important discussion between Jedi Master Quinlan Voss, Jedi Master and Jedi High Council member Luminara Unduli, and Clone Commander Fey. Importantly, this conversation occurred within the aftermath of Dooku's death and the Battle of Coruscant, around the time of the Battle of Kashyyyk as seen in Revenge of the Sith. After Commander Fey eliminated a Trandoshan who he deemed was an enemy to the Republic, an action that the Jedi disagreed with completely, Fey was adamant that it was his duty to kill all enemies of the Republic. Importantly for our video here, after Voss asked, quote, as defined by whom, Fey didn't hesitate to reply, quote, by the command code, demonstrating how important the command code was in guiding the actions of the clone troopers. Even more important, when Voss asked what Faye would do if he received conflicting orders from two commanders, Faye simply replied that the command code sorted it all out, leaving no questions, no doubts, and no hesitation. I'll also point out the importance of a conversation that took place between Quinlan and Luminara in the immediate aftermath of this situation. When discussing what would happen to the clone troopers when the galactic conflict ended, Luminara was clear, telling Quinlan, quote, our safety resides in the fact that the clones do obey, and they are trained to obey the Jedi. 
Therefore, this scene demonstrates how important it was for Sidious to establish an explicit chain of command that every clone trooper understood, given how committed the clone troopers were to following it when carrying out their orders during the Clone War. Not only that, but through the words of Luminara, who sat upon the Jedi High Council, it reveals that there were Jedi who believed that ultimately, the clone troopers would obey the Jedi. This demonstrates why it would be so important for Darth Sidious to formally name himself the Supreme Commander of the Republic's Armed Forces and the Jedi Order following the Battle of Coruscant, as by creating an explicit chain of command through the Security Act amendments, Sidious removed any confusion regarding who the clone troopers would obey when Order 66 was executed. Given the explanation of Commander Fey in issue number 81 of the Star Wars Republic comic series, in combination with the amendments that followed the Battle of Coruscant that explicitly left no doubt that Palpatine was the Supreme Commander within the context of Order 66, it's clear how Darth Vader was able to recognize within the Legends novel Dark Lord The Rise of Darth Vader, only weeks after the events of Revenge of the Sith, that, quote, on myriad worlds, Order 66 had been executed without misfortune. However, even with these aspects in place, Order 66 still experienced misfortune from the perspective of Sidious and the Sith in regards to what the clone troopers did on the planet of Mercana during Order 66. But I think we can use this unique event to argue that had Sidious executed Order 66 prior to the Battle of Coruscant, and more specifically, prior to the passing of the Supreme Command Amendment and the Judicial Command Amendment, then Order 66 would have likely failed and ended in disaster for the Sith. The importance of establishing an explicit chain of command understood by the clone troopers is seen in a different way within the novel Dark Lord The Rise of Darth Vader. The novel depicts how events transpired during Order 66 on the planet of Mercana, events that were unique compared to how Order 66 was carried out on other planets across the galaxy. Importantly for our video, on Mercana, after receiving orders from Clone Commander Salvo to eliminate the Jedi they were fighting with on the planet against the Separatists, a clone trooper named Clymer decided to reject those orders, ultimately rescuing a group of Jedi by informing them about the order to eliminate them and allowing them to escape. When Commander Salvo confronted Clymer about his decision to allow the Jedi to escape, he explained to Clymer that the orders had come from the top of the command chain. Importantly, Clymer then stated that he thought the Jedi were at the top, and just as important, in explaining that the order had come from Palpatine, Salvo reminded Clymer that they served the Chancellor and not the Jedi, confirming that it was Palpatine and not the Jedi who were at the top of the command chain. This scene within Dark Lord is important for two reasons. First, it demonstrates how important it was for clone commanders like Salvo to respect and follow the command chain established during the Galactic Conflict. As Salvo recognized Palpatine as the top of the command chain, he attempted to carry out Order 66 in a way that followed the description used by Commander Fey, with no questions, no doubts, and no hesitation. However, at the same time, we see how a clone trooper such as Clymer reacted to Order 66, the order to eliminate the Jedi, when he believed that the Jedi were at the top of the command chain. Along with Clymer's view that he would serve those who were fighting alongside him, watching his back, and putting a weapon in his hand when he needed it most, this clearly had an influence upon him when it came to his overall decision to reject Order 66, instead deciding to help protect the Jedi, and ultimately, to help them escape. Clymer and these actions that occurred on Mercana were unique, but Sidious didn't hesitate to inform Vader of how troublesome this event was, sending his apprentice specifically to Mercana to deal with the clone troopers who failed to carry out Order 66, and to provide a reminder to all of them that they, quote, would do well to understand whom they truly serve. I think we can argue that the amendments that were passed following the Battle of Coruscant significantly decreased the possibility that the clone troopers would be confused about who was truly at the top of the command chain, as was seen in the example of Clymer, explaining why his decision was so unique during Order 66. These amendments, combined with the loyalty that they were provided from the beginning of their creation, ensured that the clone troopers followed Order 66 and carried out their orders to eliminate the Jedi. Therefore, if Palpatine had attempted to execute Order 66 prior to the Battle of Coruscant, that is, prior to successfully passing the Supreme Command Amendment and the Judicial Command Amendment that formally named Palpatine the Supreme Commander of the Republic's Armed Forces and the Jedi Order, thereby creating an explicit chain of command that was understood by every clone trooper, with Clymer being a significantly unique exception, then it was possible that there could have been numerous examples where clone troopers acted as Clymer did, refusing to carry out Order 66 because they believed that the Jedi were at the top of the command chain. 
Instead, as Dark Lord makes clear, this wasn't the case. The clone troopers acted without doubts, questions, and hesitation. In the end, the Sith succeeded in the goals they had set out decades earlier by instantly attacking every Jedi across the galaxy at the same time, and by succeeding in eliminating an overwhelming number of Jedi. So there we have it. Why Order 66 would have failed if Palpatine executed it prior to the Battle of Coruscant. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions. Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. If not for me... For the Battle of Coruscant.